Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. A uh, quick teardown of an Atari 2600 joystick. Um, I think this is described as working in the directions. There's like a, you can just feel, probably won't hear it, a little bit of a click for each of those direction presses there, but the button just feels really spongy. It should be a little bit more clicky than that, I think. So, um, yeah, and obviously I need to clean up. Look at the stay of this, it's disgusting. So, I'll you know strip it all down completely, pull the PCB out. Wash the top and bottom of the sink, uh, I think, you know, because look at all the grime that's in here as well. Um, but it'd just be interesting to see the board. I think I've probably had one of these apart, but many, many, many years ago. Um, I'm hoping it's just one of those little uh, blister type buttons and we might be able to. Um, I might even replace it. I think I've got some spare old ones from an old uh, AM, FM um, alarm clock or something. I might be able to just swap the button out on it. So just those four screws holding the top on, uh, you know, it's oof, really dirty. You can see, look at the shit on the inside of here. So yeah, definitely needs a good clean. And look at the screws, ouch, at the corrosion um, on the heads of those. So yeah, I'll be cleaning these screws up as well. Don't know how so much moisture's gone to there. I guess it would do under you, you know, if you're holding it in your hand, this is probably a common thing. But yeah, you can see it's a bit like the Amiga mouse um, buttons, you know, these blister type ones. So I can always just try and, I might just re them a little bit, I think. And they're not too bad actually, they're pretty clicky. But you can see that one there's a bit misaligned, it's still centre with regards to that, uh, you know, the, the, the trace on this side here. So that wouldn't cause a problem, but it's just a funny angle. Um, I've forgotten actually, these are crimped, can you see? The connections are crimped onto the PCB. So yeah, that's all you need to do with one of these, I would suggest, is, you know, peel the, the, the covering back, um, clean the uh, pads and things on both sides of them, take them back down, um, and just make sure you've got good connections here as well and obviously these are prone to the same problems as all joysticks in that the you know the entry and exit points of the joystick can be a problem you know the wire may will be broken at some point in there or it could be broken at this end near the connector but um, the wire on this one's good as far as I understand it is just the um, fire button here which strangely enough actually clicks okay um, it might be the plastic on here that's a little bit worn down I don't know but uh, yeah I think the next thing I'm going to do here is just take all these plastic parts out and uh, give it all a good clean down in the sink with a scrubbing brush so I've just given all the parts a good scrub in the sink here, you can see they've come up uh, like new really, got all the dirt out of all the grooves and the gaps. <clears throat> One thing um, worth saying about these is the build quality is absolutely excellent really. I'm amazed this has lasted so long, you know, I think it's this plastic shaft here um, and the way it's been designed to fit into here along with this rubber piece there. It's just like really well designed, um, amazed how well these, you know, how many years, these have been knocking around like, get, it must be almost 40 years now, getting on for 40 years I would think, uh, certainly 30 years. Um, anyway, so I'll dry all this off, um, uh, and then I'll have a take a look at the board. You can see actually I've you know disconnected it for the moment, and uh, see if we can do anything with those buttons. So as I'm peeling this off here, it's clear to me all the sticky stuff has just gone. It's died over the years. You know, there's no way you could use that to stick it back down. So I'm just going to stick these back down with sellotape. tape. I'm just going to carefully peel the whole thing off here, clean the board up, and um, just stick them down back down each with a fresh piece of tape. I'm going to be careful because I don't want to damage. Um, any of the board here and pulling traces or anything off if the weakly adhered to the uh, plastic. I don't think that's going to happen. But yeah, just a bit of patience is required really to get all this off. So there we go. You can see all the little uh, metal bits off there. And this just needs a good clean up now. So just using some kitchen roll with a bit of IPA and just going over the uh, spots here where the uh, contacts are. So the same as when I did that Amiga mouse really, clean the contacts up themselves on that side. Um, you know, the side that's concaved inwards. Um, and then I think these don't have a point, you know, you, you can see in the centre there, there's no sort of single tip that makes the connection. Um, I think the way this works is it's raised up on the board, it just feels that way and looks that way. There's like a little notch on there, just a tiny bit. Um, that's very interesting. So because there's no point, I think what I'm going to do is just put it flat down like that, uh, with the concave part facing towards me. I'm oh, sorry, I'm just about to see that. Um, and then just use sort of the a, a roundish smooth edge. That's probably a bit too big actually, I can just do something a bit smaller. Um, perhaps something like that. Um, there, just to push it down a little bit. Not a lot, we don't want to put a crease into it, or a kink, just to give it a bit of um, torque back. So as you can see, I cleaned it up, put it back on there, and got a fresh piece of tape over that. And I had to pierce a hole, obviously, where the 
a screw goes in there but uh, I'm just going to put the meter on continuity test um, okay what's going on here there we go um, uh, just follow the traces um, the center one goes all the way in fact all the center ones are joined together and then they go to this uh, thing down here you want to get to see it this one um, and then the other one is that one there so if I hold the meter on there try and press the button oh, not, that, not that easy to do actually with two, only two hands yeah you can hear it click there as I press it great so I've got them all back on there now each one uh, taped down with a fresh piece of tape and nice and clean contacts on the board nice and clean so um, yeah around here is okay I can just crimp the wires back on now um, reassemble it and give it a try so there's the wires back on as you can see orange white green on the left hand side here um, brown blue black on the right so then if you get your stick and your button back into the top piece and then this board can slide um, on top can you see this uh, just where that finger is there and where that finger is there there's two little plastic guides that help hold that in place so make sure your wires are on the underside of the board here they don't you don't want to get them trapped there though that's one thing you have to be careful of I'm not sure how I'm gonna deal with that actually I think that's it. Yeah, that feels a lot more responsive. So I'll screw it back together now and let's give it a test. So I just wire brushed the um, screw heads here because they're pretty rusted up and it's got some WD-40 in a rack. And you'll see I just scrunch this in here and get it all over the surface of the screw. Um, and it makes it go dark grey, can you see? Well, that's going to stop, um, well, help stop it corroding further. Um, As you can see, it's uh, not too bad now. So there you go, there's the final result. Um, you can tell it's genuine Atari because it's got the Atari logo on the connects a lot of the fakes and things down. Um, and obviously from the assembly of the PCB and stuff inside. Because you can get quite a lot of these uh, USB ones these days that are similar in style. But uh, anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching, see you soon.